Okay, so the radar is patient file. Basically, um, this is how it looks. There's, it's uh, like every aspect of the program, you know, you've got quite a lot of different options. So the first thing to introduce you to is the actual preferences page of Radar Opus. And on Windows, you go up to tools and then click on options. On a Mac, you click on Radar Opus and then preferences. And that opens the, uh, the options or the preferences. Let me just, while I'm here, I'll just turn on my uh, pointer tool so you can see what the mouse is doing better. Okay. Uh, uh, and that. Okay. So these are, these are your global preferences for Radar Opus. And if you click on patient setup, you'll see the preferences there for the patient file. So much of this you won't need to worry about. Uh, this feature is really helpful for doing stuff like this. So I can hide the names of my patients. So it means I can actually show you um, their you know, consultations without worrying about revealing any information. Uh, down here, there's some text you can enter for, you know, if you ever want to print a sort of prescription for your patient, then you can customize what text should be included in that printout. But the main options you're going to change are in the consultation tab. See here, I've got general consultation. So um, I, I prefer this font. So you can change the font for the text editor to whatever you want. And the font size. You seem to have to choose quite a high font size, higher than you know, you'd expect okay. um, from Microsoft Word. And here, if you, so basically like anything in Radar Opus, the, what you get in the program depends on what engine you have. So you can always check the engine details from the Radar Opus website. If you go to products, Radar Opus, engine types, feature comparison, then you can check there what you get access to and this is the patient file section so you can check here you know relative to your engine if you don't know ask your dealer or better yet i'll show you in radar opus how you can check okay just gonna make sure i can see the chat okay cool and hide that so if you click on help in Radar Opus and then go down to license information, you'll see the engine and package details there. So with Diamond, you get all the bells and whistles, of course. And this is what you get in the patient file. So that's what I'm gonna be showing you today. Um, and if you don't see stuff in yours, then the reason will be that you're using silver or gold. Hopefully none of you are using mini, that's a bit uh, unfit for purpose. Okay, so let me just keep scrolling up. Yeah, so back where we were, preferences, patient setup, consultation, yeah. So if you have the diamond engine, you can change the intensity of certain chunks of text in the um, text editor, which is actually really helpful. Um, and I'll show you an example of that later. And there are some other options here. So in general, the best practice when you come to repertorize a case is to create the patient first rather than start putting in rubrics to a clipboard and then trying to save the repertorization later to a patient that can often lead to confusion. So you can either click on the drop down um, arrow next to patients and click on create a new patient, or you can um, just press command N or control N. And you're gonna go into the administrative, annoyingly it does show my patient's name at that point, but there we go. Uh, and then you enter the name of your patient, okay? so. Call it AHE demo one. And you can enter the gender. You can even, you know, if they're transgender, that can be entered here. 
Um, basically, the way the patient file works is that in all of these boxes, or in a box, any box that shows this icon here, this triangular icon, means there's a list. And if you click on the plus icon, then you can enter a new value. So if you want to add something to any of the lists, you can do it. Okay, so we could put, uh, you could actually put in here, just demo. So I've got loads of demos and they're not any kind of gender. Uh, and likewise for title, you can add whatever you want there. We'll go doctor because we're feeling fancy. Um, and then you can enter in their address, place of birth, nationality, Skype details and all of that. And you can even put in some notes here. If these aren't showing, um, you can sort of hide them by clicking here. So you might see it more like this, in which case you just click on all of these to um, unfold them. There we go. Uh, and then I'll just take you through the various options in the admin side. You can click on the hat there and that's sort of like gives you the marital status. So it's family information, personal, bloods and surgery, previous treatments. You know, you can put in the different. So whenever there's a pick list, which is what the, the technical term for is, um, you know, when you have this triangle, if you press F9, that's the shortcut to open it. So they've had a conventional treatment. And if the F keys don't work, um, on your computer, specifically for Radar Opus, you need to change your settings because by default, the F keys controls things like volume and screen brightness on your computer. So just Google, how do I change my F keys? Um, and, and you'll find how you do that. Um, but if you don't want to do that and you want to keep them for your computer, you just have to hold down the function key, which says F N on it, hold that down and then press the F key. So yeah, you can put all of this information in so you can really go to town. So I, I tend to sort of skip a lot of this stuff and just go, you know, or often you don't have time and go straight into the consultation, but uh, it's good to, good to know what's there. Okay, and here is the like invoicing section. And basically if you've entered in the, um, their address, you can like import that in here. You see this button, um, use the name from the administrative window and that will bring in their address and all their details. So you don't have to do it again. And then you just click here to create an invoice. So again, you have to be, you have to have put in all of their details for this side of it to work. And it's not something I personally use, so. I won't go into a massive amount of detail there. Okay, so that's basically the administrative side done. Then you just click on consultations. This is the more important uh, section. So the first thing you need to know is, um, this is where you type your symptoms. So let's say we've got uh, pain, Ooh, dropping, okay. whatever um, so basically the key thing here is you want to um, have a new line for each like symptom or each uh, chunk of text relating to you know the anamnesis so what you do the keyboard shortcut is the tab key rather than enter just keeps you in the same um, sort of block if you press tab it means that you can um, keep each symptom separate and the reason you do that really is so that you can change the grading of the different symptoms. So I could say that's grade three or grade four or grade two. And the idea is that the idea with that is that it can roughly relate to the grading in the repertory. But in practice, you, you can you can use it for different things like, you know, things happen quickly in a consultation, especially when somebody's loquacious and talks fast. Um, so you could just be typing and then um, you know you just 
quickly come up here and hit four because you want to make sure you see that when you look back over what they've been saying and you know you're thinking oh i want to ask them about that when they when they finish so you can use it in that way too it's um you know it's open to interpretation how you want to use it okay and that's basically it in terms of entering the symptoms what you can do up here is you can enter the type of consultation so f9 so you can say it's chronic or acute and again you can add anything in here like if uh, someone from the family says something you know i've created this familiar observation or it comes from a phone call or an email and by tagging everything in this way when you come to use the search tool to sort of review your case and your practice um, it means you've got different criteria so you could look up all the acute cases which you gave aconite for for example so i can mark that as an acute you can put in the chief complaint and again this is a list that will uh, grow as your practice grows so you just click on the plus to add a new uh, a new value a new word so like viral group for example and you can state whether it's in the clinic or at home or the home visit and that again allows you to later on search you know just show me the patients who i saw in the home visits or in clinic etc okay and then you've got the prescription here so that sort of by default kind of shows and hides as you move the mouse down but if it for some reason sometimes it gets stuck so if you need to know this shortcut it's command l or control l and with this pin you can make it stay there you can pin it so let's say for argument's sake we're going to give stuff sagria so if you know the abbreviation you can just type it if you don't know it you press f9 to see the list let's say it's a 30c so i type 13 double click and then scale f9 and it's a hanumanian centesimal posology i'm going to say a repeated dose so you just type what you're looking for and it comes up and you double click and you can state the lab which uh, in my case is pretty much always Helios, but you can see there's other ones here too. Not sure if guessing herring might be in the US, but if it's not there, then you can add it here. Okay, and then you see this little disc icon is where it saves. Because it's gray, that means it's save. And up here is the disc icon to save the text editor. So if I start doing... So does it save automatically or do you have to make sure to hit that little disc? It saves, like say if I were to now click out of the text editor into my overview page, it would automatically save. Mm -hmm. But uh, in general, I'm, uh, you know, I'm the sort of person who wants to make sure it's saved. So after I've done a big chunk of text, I'll just go and click save um, okay. just to be sure. But yeah, it's it's pretty it behaves itself pretty well to be fair, which is important because this is your you know what your patient's saying. It's very important. Okay, so that goes away, and you can also enter in uh, pathologies, which um, is of course not as important as the symptoms in homeopathy, but uh, it's important to know and document. So again, there's a like there's 99 pages of pathologies all with their correct, I assume medical code. I don't really know, I have to admit, because I'm not a doctor, but let's just say you were wanting to put in a, a pathology. Let's say something to do with the gallbladder. So I type gall and we've got here, let's say, Fistula, good plan for argument's sake. Doesn't sound very nice. You see it updates with the code as well. And you can enter in a duration. Let's say one month. You can put in a trend, whether it's improving, steady, worsening, still active. And you can put whether it's fatal or not. And then here you see the disk is available for saving. 
So now I've entered all of those uh, bits of information. If I click on the overview icon, you'll see it all here. So we've got the date, the pathology, the prescription, uh, the analysis, which we haven't made yet. And the reaction we don't know because we haven't created a follow-up and we haven't spoken to the patient yet. And then we've got the complaint, the consultation type, etc. So what we need to do then is to add some symptoms. So let's say I want to search for this one. I think we'll find lycoponium there. So you guys know that you don't need to type the full word. You can just use an asterisk. You can search directly from the window at the top. By default, it will search in the last um, specified place here. So I'm going to change that to all repertories. Jasper's not very happy. And then we find our, our symptoms here. So uh, yeah, like a podium. Um, let's say we just want to take all of these rather than just that one. I'm going to right click, take all rubrics. Create a new combined one. And then we'll just wait for my analysis to open. There we go. Okay. What's going on there? Hmm. Huh. Huh. What? What are the hints? Hang on a minute. Something weird's going on. Ah, you you just did something, Luke, that I don't I've never seen before. I don't know that anyone else has seen before. And that was to ah. select four rubrics and combine yeah. them without having to go through the click, 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 funny yeah. hand gestures, stand on one leg. Can you do that? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a it's a useful useful little trick that uh, let's say we were going to look for another dream of um, being pursued, for example. Okay, so looks like there's 46, 44 instances here. So let's say we just want to combine all of those. I'm sure most of them will be in this large rubric anyway, but for the sake of uh, showing you how it works, you just right click anywhere in the search window and take all rubrics and create a new combined rubric. Or if you wanna be more specific, you can just use these boxes here so you can check a number of them and then right click and choose the option above. Take the selected rubrics. But in this case, I'm gonna take all rubrics, which is 44 and you can see them going into the clipboard automatically and then comes up this is what was giving me a problem earlier i just get rid of that and you can see by the asterisk here that it's uh, a grouped rubric i grouped it it's really really great little feature good time saver and uh, if you choose view all documents in one list and search in all repertories then you can combine them from different repertories too so, you know, you, if you wanted to have more contemporary information, Patricia have a these lax repertory, if you have that uh, installed, then you would get things, you would get results from there. Likewise, my own thematic repertory would come up and you can, so it's a way of uh, combining all your repertory sources quite quickly. Okay. And another nice uh, tip, if you don't know it, is if you double click, on the tab, it just closes the table of contents for you or opens it. Okay, so let's say so you see now the disk icons available again to save. So that will save my analysis now. So I've got two rubrics there. And now when I click on the overview icon, we'll see my two symptoms there. Okay, and that's basically it. That's now saved. The analysis is linked to the patient file. Now, all you need to do is create an, a second consultation, which you do with the pencil and the plus icon. And 
for the type of consultation, I'm going to go uh, follow up and it was an acute case. There we go. The chief complaints may be different now. And you'll see that there's a new box appeared in consultation number one, which by default stays so that you can see it above consultation number two. And I can put in the general evaluation. So let's say major improvement. Okay, um, we'll just say, you know, all good. Um, and then down here, you'll see I can enter the prescription for consultation number two. And I've got all consultations ticked. So that shows me the first one there. So you might not need to prescribe, in which case you don't enter a prescription there. Okay. And that is basically, those are the basic functions. Um, I'll just get rid of that window. Um, and you see this icon here, this sort of double arrow that kind of hides all this stuff, which you don't really need to see once you've entered the information and that cleans up the window a lot, um, which is nice when you're actually typing the case. The, the, the final thing to show you is the evaluation side. And this is, this is something that, um, that I didn't use very much, um, certainly when I first started with the program, but it's got immense value for research and, um, you know, Clifford Hall project's been given a big boost recently and people are using it now. So, yeah, I think if all of us can get used to actually thinking about evaluating um, the remedy response in a more systematic way and entering it into our programs, then when we come to organize sort of research projects, we'll have um, much better data. And this is all available within the, um, within the program. So you can make just a general evaluation uh, by the homeopath or by the patient. You can see it's already copied it in from the, um, where I entered it up here. See here. So that's entered here. You can add some additional notes. You can even um, look at the actual symptoms and evaluate each symptom. So let's say I was going to evaluate consultation number two and say uh, that cured. Put it in here as well. Yeah, and as you as you go on adding consultations, you'll get a sort of patient trend graph showing showing up here. Okay. So has anyone got any questions uh, just just yet? I might have missed some. Yes, sir, I do. Yeah, yeah go on. Um, under the consultation where you can input your symptoms, if you are taking your notes in, in like a word processor like Word, can you import those, copy and paste those in? And does it move them into individual lines? Yeah, so the way I would do that is to um, copy sort of paragraph by paragraph into each sort of text box in the program. Uh, and that will allow you the flexibility to grade and tag each symptom. Um, if you want to use the full functionality of the patient file, then that's the best way to do it rather than just doing select all, copy, paste. Um, that would put it all into one text box, yeah. But it's absolutely, uh, yeah, it's possible to copy paste into it. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I got a question. So um, I was with you until a certain point. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and the point where you and I dis just separated was when you went to the repertory. Okay. So I was tracking you beautifully, got a consultation going, got the prescription thing down the bottom. Yeah, you had a slightly different screen, but I worked out how to get your screen up all good. And then you went and you selected a rubric or two. Yep. And I did the same thing. And you then you saved it. And I yep. can't and I couldn't see how you saved it. Uh, okay. Um, 
Let's see. Can I make you a co-host and you can share your screen and show me? So 